And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords. And Adam joining us on the line. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy Friday. <laughs> it's not just me. It's everyone, right? It's it's like at the Friday high, if you will. <laughs> yeah, it comes once every week. Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Small joys in life. I mean, that's how we, I don't know, enjoy each week to the fullest, in my humble opinion. Do you ever yeah. feel like an imposter at work? Because I was talking to Diane mm. off air about the fact that yeah. broadcasting, I feel like, is a pinnacle of this. Um, there is this great notion of fake it a little bit until mm-hmm. you make it. <laughs> Fake it a little bit until you make it. Yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's usually just, our persona yeah. on air is slightly more hyped up and uh, a bit more energetic than our usual selves, I this think. True. So, yeah. Yeah. So especially for us in the early mornings where we have to, you know, get that little bit of ounce of energy. Uh, on air. We try our best, don't we? <laughs> All right. We'll talk a little bit more about it in detail in our second hour. Listeners, in the meantime, do you ever feel like an imposter at work? Like maybe you're not as confident as your coworkers perceive you to be for us, for I guess more so than our listeners and viewers assume us to be. But anyway, the imposter syndrome we'll talk about more in our second hour. It's time for keyword news. So I will say this, though. I am always in the shadow of Lena Kwan. What is happening? It's time for <laughs> keyword news. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at some of these major headlines and clarify for our listeners. And this is our first pick of the day. Biden to Korea. So as we've been talking about this entire week, U.S. President Joe Biden is on his way to South Korea for a three-day trip ahead of his trip to Japan. Remind us again what to expect from his visit. Yeah, so we have been mentioning quite a bit uh, on what to expect from Biden's trip here to uh, South Korea. Um, But uh, of course, the main uh, events will be the summit with the new president, Yoon Song Young. They'll be discussing a wide range of issues. Those will include, of course, North Korea, uh, the economy, and of course, uh, bolstering the alliance between South Korea and the US. And uh, Biden will also be meeting with the country's top business leaders as well in a dinner banquet that'll be hosted uh, by the South Korean president. Um, the National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said, quote, Biden will engage with technology and manufacturing leaders in Korea who are mobilizing billions of dollars in investment here uh, in the United States uh, to create thousands of good paying American jobs. And mm. I think he's alluding to the fact that uh, companies like big tech firms like Samsung uh, having plans to build uh, factories and plants mm. in the U.S. Um, and uh, so that's why it's going to be creating some jobs there. Mm. Uh, and namely, uh, to that end, Biden's first stop in Korea is a Samsung chip plant in Pyeongtaek. And he'll be hosted by the Samsung Electronics Vice Chairman Lee Jae-yong. Uh, and also the President Yoon might be joining them as well at the factory. In fact, Yoon sung apart from the uh, not just the summit on Saturday, tomorrow, mm. uh, Yoon is apparently going to be accompanying Biden for the whole three days mm-hmm. while the U.S. president is here. Um, meanwhile, though, something that has been left out of the itinerary is a scheduled uh, visit to the DMZ. Apparently, that's not on the schedule anymore. Mm. Uh, so that's contrary to reports that he was going Uh, to visit the DMZ. Uh, But that could be because he's already visited the DMZ when he was vice president and also uh, a member of the uh, Senate as well um, Mm -hmm. a a few years ago. Mm. Now, uh, on Saturday, tomorrow, uh, Biden will also visit the Seoul National Cemetery uh, after the summit with you to pay tribute to fallen soldiers of the Korean War. Um, Yoon and Biden summit will begin at around 1.30 p.m. at the new Yongsan presidential office. Um, An expanded meeting will immediately follow the one-on-one talks, which will include officials from both sides. And the presidents will hold a joint press conference at around 4 p.m. And Yoon will later host, uh, as I mentioned before, that official dinner banquet. Uh, That will be held at the National Museum um, of Korea, in fact, Mm. at 7 uh, p.m. That's where a lot of uh, business leaders, the heads of the country's top conglomerates, as Mm. well as uh, people, um, pr- prominent people from uh, culture and sports will also be attending um, as well. So those are things to look forward to. All right. Let's stay on the topic of Biden's visit. What may or may not happen from the North Korean side? This is our second keyword of the day. 
nuclear test. So there are concerns that North Korea may soon conduct a nuclear test in line with the U.S. president's visit. Are there any signs of such a provocation as of late? Yeah, so for the uh, past couple of weeks, we've been kind of hinting and uh, citing reports that suggest that North Korea might conduct a a nuclear test in time for Biden's trip. Um, Now, the National Intelligence Service says North Korea is gauging the timing of a nuclear test after completing all preparations. So it appears that the regime is complete in its uh, Mm. preparation to conduct a nuclear test. Uh, it's just the timing of it mm-hmm. is in uh, uh, is uh, in question. Seen, yeah, in question. Now the NIS also says the regime is showing signs of preparing for a missile uh, launch as well. So we could, if not, see a nuclear test. We could be seeing an ICBM launch as well, possibly. Uh, and it also gave the assessment during the closed door briefing to lawmakers, and the briefing was relayed to reporters by the People Power Party's Hate Kun uh, Gun, and the DP's Kim Byung Gi said. Quote, it would not be strange at all, even if North Korea fires a missile or conducts a nuclear test at any point. Um, Now, the NIS added that both South Korea and the U.S. military authorities are keeping a readiness posture and are reportedly discussing plans of deploying U.S. strategic assets Mm. as well. Uh, Now, a U.S. reconnaissance aircraft uh, actually flew from Okinawa, uh, Japan, to the East Sea yesterday morning, apparently with the aim of monitoring North Korea's ballistic missile launch uh, preparations. Mm. Now, both Seoul and Washington believe that the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak in the North will not stall uh, a missile test by the regime. It seems to be business as usual for everything in the uh, the regime, construction and mm. uh, weapons pres- uh, preparations as well. Mm. Uh, but of course, nothing confirmed yet, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens over the weekend. I think that was a typo. Ha Tae-kyung, right, of the PPP. Oh, Ha Tae-kyung, excuse me, yes. No problem. Uh, And the White House has also reiterated that the U.S. is ready to adjust both its short and long-term military posture, ready for any contingency. So it does seem like South Korea and the U.S. is on the same part in that regard. Now, let's move on to our third keyword of the day. Higher income. Uh, Turning to some economic news and recent data showing that household income has grown in the first quarter. Can you run us through the latest? Yeah, so uh, this comes at a timely time because inflation uh, has been rising as well. (laughs) So it is fitting uh, and good news to some that household income has grown. And it's actually grown at the fastest pace on record in the first quarter, in fact. Mm. Uh, This is, of course, all on the back of the economic recovery that's happening, as well as state relief funds for pandemic hit merchants as well. Uh, data, Data from Statistics Korea show that the average household earned 4.83 4.83 million won per month in Q1. That's mm-hmm. up just over 10% on year. Uh, household income also grew for the third straight quarter uh, as well. Now, income for those in the lowest 20% bracket rose by nearly 15% on year. That's the most among all income brackets, in mm. fact. And that was led by higher employment of those aged 60 or older. Uh, Relaxed virus curbs also helped prop up the output of the in-person service segment. Uh, Wage income rose 10.2% on year to an average of just over 3 million won uh, Mm. per month. Um, The monthly average income uh, from business operations spiked nearly 12.5% to 862,000 won. Um, And uh, household spending increased as well in the first quarter. That was led by gains in expenditures on food, uh, accommodations and education, as well as healthcare services. Uh, The average household spent three and a half million won per month. That's up just about uh, six percent from the previous year. But this is mainly due to inflation because prices of everything have pretty much uh, increased. Um, However, the finance ministry says although household income and spending have risen, it is uncertain whether they will continue to improve considering the current economic conditions. There are certain conditions that are likely to weigh on the economy. uh, So this could be just a short term bump, according to the ministry. And the ministry did add that the government is to put more effort into creating jobs uh, in the private sector Mm. and supporting the socially vulnerable. This is all news that I can't really relate to because my income hasn't really risen. (laughs) Hopefully it will do. (laughs) But uh, on the whole, uh, nationwide, it seems to be that people are earning uh, slightly more than they used to. Right. In response to inflation. But is that enough? Is an, I think, entirely different set of questions. Mm -hmm. Leave it there for now. Um, uh, On to our fourth keyword of the day. 
No resurgence. So health officials are to announce whether to lift the mandatory seven-day quarantine for COVID-19 patients today. There have been concerns over the possible lifting of the rule. Um, is it the right timing? But a local research institute is playing down worries of another resurgence. Yeah, those, those uh, downplaying of uh, concerns are coming from the National Institute of Mathematical Sciences, which says there would be no resurging of co- uh, new COVID-19 cases in the short term, short term being key there, yeah. even if the government lifts the mandatory quarantine. Now, the Institute quoted a study conducted by Professor Tung Eun Ok of Kangook University uh, and his team. Um, it was based on a mathematical modeling analysis considering the transmission power Uh, and the effect of vaccination. Uh, According to the research, new virus cases will reach uh, 36,621 after one week of lifting the quarantine, Mm -hmm. um, even in the worst case scenario. Uh, And just under 56,000 cases will occur after four weeks, according to the study. Um, Severe cases or critically ill patients will be 271 after one week and 459 after four. Uh, The study predicts about 26,000 new cases after one week if Korea does maintain the current transmission level and the mandatory quarantine and just over 20,000 new cases in four weeks. Now, Professor Chang said new virus cases will not resurge in the short term, even considering Omicron subvariants. And he stressed the importance of refraining from gatherings of confirmed patients and observing quarantine rules. But... A simulation that presumes Omicron subvariants become dominant strains points to a virus resurgence, possibly uh, in the summer. Mm. Uh, but interestingly, the same team led by Professor Chung had previously also warned that a new wave of the pandemic could break out as early as November, so in the coldest months and the seasons. Now, mm. at that time, Chung said it would be significant to maximize uh, vaccinations and keep the social distancing rules in place, Mm. uh, forecasting that the absence of the fourth dose or the second booster uh, vaccination could raise the number of deaths to 2,700 in the autumn um, resurgence. So it seems to be kind of a downscaled assessment by the same uh, professor Mm. uh, and team. But uh, of course, uh, the professor is pointing out that in the short term anyway, Mm. we won't really be seeing a resurgence if that mandatory quarantine Uh, is lifted. Okay, so they'll probably take that into consideration as well as other criticisms of whether we're lifting the seven-day quarantine period a little bit too early. They'll deliberate and they'll make an announcement today, right? They will. All right, and on to our final keyword of the day. Fukushima inspection. So the chief of the UN's nuclear watchdog has paid a visit to the crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant. What was his assessment, Adam? Right. Well, the IAEA chief, Rafael Mariano Grossi, he is in Japan on a two-day visit to assess efforts to dismantle the plant. Uh, He said he was, quote, really impressed by what he called the remarkable progress that in spite of the pandemic uh, has been done over the past two years. Now, the process is expected to last decades and has encountered various difficulties, though, including the buildup of contaminated water. That's kind of the most pressing issue at the moment. Uh, Grossi also vowed to use his agency's transparent and fact-based review process to enhance public confidence in Japan's planned release of the treated water into the sea. Mm. And he insisted the release would be done in full conformity with the international standards, and therefore it will not cause any harm to the environment. Uh, Now, the planned discharge of treated water is expected to begin around uh, next spring. Uh, But of course, there's a lot of opposition from South Korea, China, and even fishing communities within Mm. Japan as well. Um, Korea will also be taking part in the IAEA-led monitoring of the planned discharge. Uh, The foreign ministry revealed the stance a few hours, actually, after Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority approved a plan to discharge the water. Uh, Now, the ministry said Seoul will continue to communicate and consult with Tokyo um, on the planned discharge as a key interested party. Whether Tokyo will be transparent and open remains to be seen, especially with the frayed ties Mm. uh, and the opposition. Um, So we'll have to see the developments. But at the moment, it seems like the IAEA is happy with what's happening uh, before the whole plans uh, Mm. release and uh, discharge of the Mm. contaminated water. Thank you very much, Adam, for a week's worth of coverage. Have a safe weekend, and we'll see you next week. You're very welcome. You too. See you next week.
If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.